Hi guys. As I continue to downsize my deck collection, um, I am now going through my Lenormand uh, decks. And I spotted a video, uh, Top 10 Lenormand Decks, I think, by Soren, um, on his channel, Norse Pagan Tarot Witch. And so that actually made me think about which are my top whatever decks, which are my favorite Lenormand decks that I feel is really the core of my, um, not so much a collection, I don't really collect Lenormand decks as such because the artwork are very much, the way I use my Lenormand uh, cards, I read symbols only and if I have to see the symbol and I um, understand from various resources online what each symbol usually represents and then the expansion of those general meanings are uh, obtained through experience, the context of the question, the context of the other cards around it, as well as intuition. And so, um, because it's such a utilitarian um, deck, it's such a, um, I'm not, not technical, I'm not quite sure what the word is, but I think I've mentioned before, if you've seen my other videos, that I only use the Norman deck um, in one particular way, which is divination or uh, future casting, because there's really no other way of using them. And so because of that, through some difficult personal experiences, I have come to the conclusion that uh, for future casting, I will only confine that kind of activity to um, business questions and so I, I use these cards extremely differently from how I use my say tarot card which is very psychological, very reflective, very um, almost like a um, almost like one of those gateways that I am trying on to get into a more mystical experience um, once my self self-help journey with them finished this year. Uh, this is what I'm doing with those um, cards. But with the Law Normand, it's very, very specific. And so because of that, there's only so many ways someone can depict, say, the moon. And there are a lot of ways. I've seen some really beautifully creative ways of depicting these symbols. But in a way that I can still use them, in a way that I read particularly in a way that I work with the images particularly they have to be very specific and that is very um, concrete very clear um, in terms of what symbol I'm looking at <coughs> and I don't usually do large spreads um, the biggest spread because it's usually business questions the biggest spread is probably nine but even then it got a bit convoluted so usually I do two cards, two cards, three cards per question, and then just keep asking the question. So let's uh, begin with maybe this one here. This is a, a real classic. Um, I purchased this from gameofhopelenorman.com. Um, in those days, you can order uh, tins like this. And recently, I've looked through their uh, listing and I haven't been able to see tins. So I don't know whether they're, they're still providing that or not. I've shown you some of my uh, Lenormand collection, but I've never really done um, top three or you know favorites ones for my uh, for my Lenormand anyway. And so this is called Le Fanu's Destroyed Dawn Dorf. There is a collector and a reader whose pen name online on Eclectic Tarot is Le Fanu. Uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I know that's based on um, a literature figure. He also has a, a blog called My Curious Cabinet. So I think if I understand this correctly, he obtained this particular vintage uh, deck, very, very tatty, very worn with all this handwritten things and coffee stains on them and send it to gameofhopelenorman.com and reproduce them and make them available for purchase for other people. So that's the extra man and woman card. That's the cover, and that's the back. I love the back. It's, so it's very, and this is the game of hopelenorman.com, I believe, is currently under new management. I believe it's currently the uh, former proprietor 
proprietor's daughter now who's managing it, the game of hoblenorman.bitcartel.com reproduction and restoration of all the Norman cards. So it's signed by Lauren there. And I think it's Lauren's daughter now who's in charge. I think if you put game of hoblenorman.com you'll get the you'll get to the shop as well. So I, I quite like that Osaga carton. Um, I found myself that when I um, <coughs> when I work with the images, oh, with the cards, I usually have a very urgent, very um, quick questions to ask. And you know, so in a lot of business decisions, you have a lot of moving parts and a lot of unknown variables. And sometimes it can get really overwhelming, especially when you're taking some risks. And so this is my way of uh, trying to pin down at least one or two of the moving parts and some of the unknown variables. And um, of course, in like any business decisions, your own sound judgment, rationale, the facts of the situation, as well as your experience in the area of um, business has to count for a lot. And so this is merely um, trying to help the mind settle into a more focused way. So you see there's all this ink. Somebody has spilled an ink um, blot on this particular card and I just love that. You have all the, you know, the interesting um, age without the hygiene concern as the ones that I have for this particular deck here because it's that's really warm as well. But also you don't have to worry about destroying it further because it's linen cardstock is just really nice. Yeah, so, um, you know, whatever synchronistic um, web of fate, whatever it is that's out there, God, ancestors, spirits, random occurrence, whatever it is, I, the mind sometimes, at least the way I use these things, need to be tied together. And I, I, I found this, this kind of system helps. So that's my, um, one of my favorites is the, the classic. Um, because I found that in, in such urgency, what I was trying to say was that in such urgency, I found that I need to do a quick, quick, you know, see the situation really quickly. And I often found myself moving away from um, decks, which um, aesthetics actually I really like, but somehow I need to just get on with it. And the aesthetic became unimportant, sometimes become a hindrance because... I enjoy visual pleasure and the aesthetic actually made me uh, sit in a, in, a, in a mind space that I really needed to move on from. Um, you know, um, being inspired isn't even part of the working with these cards for me. For example, if I need to resolve a business quandary, you know, feeling drawn in um, into a particular um, mental space is sometimes actually a hindrance for me and so I actually tend to move this actually I really love the art of this particular deck this is called um, what is it this is by Root Weaver Weaver <clears throat> It's called Zing Doodle. Oh, there it is. Zing Doodle in Norland. I actually really like the artwork of this one. But when I was, um, you know, when I'm trying to answer or pin down a lot of, you know, there's a lot of tension, a lot of stress, a lot of urgency. Sometimes timeline is, is tight and um, st stress is high because you're taking a variety of risks. The lovely um, artwork actually slowed me down, if that makes sense. And so reading with this kind of deck, this classic one here, usually what I ended up doing, because I need to not appreciate the art, I need to not be immersed or engage um, in some sensual pleasure, um, in this case visual. <clears throat> And so this is better for perhaps a slower pace reading with two cards or three cards for me. But I really love this. It's not only beautiful and creative, but it's very clear in terms of what symbol I'm looking at. There's no question. And if I flip through this really quick, it's on purpose because 
if you can't figure out within that split second what symbol you're looking at, it's probably not the right deck for you. Um, if the way you read is, is more like my way of reading, if you use these cards more in a way that I use them, uh, because there are plenty of ways uh, to use these tools, right? So it all kind of depends on how the purpose of your reading, the style of your reading, that sort of thing. So Zing Doodle by Root Weaver. I, I really like this. This is this is one of the few that will stay in my collection, um, and I think the rest will have to go. I will pick favorites, and then after that, the rest will have to go. I believe the creator is in Australia, so uh, for some of you, if you are thinking of getting this, uh, shipping might be, but just be prepared for shipping. But it's, I highly recommend that. I've um, custom ordered this tin uh, from someone on Etsy. I can't remember who it was, um, but if you're interested, I can search for her, her shop name and forward that to you. So as you can see, I created all these tins for my favorite decks. Uh, this is my workhorse, really. Um, I haven't really been working with the Norman lately. Um, things have been uh, a lot calmer in the last few months. So this is another one of my favorite. Hold on a second, the wind just blew my door open. Another one that is my favorite that I haven't been able to find, um, and I really don't want to have to dig through a lot of decks to find it, is called the Silhouette um, Lenormand. I will try to find that link to the store, and I think it's um, available on Game Crafter. I'll link it below. There's a description section down below here. This is from Germany. Um, It's quite interesting, it has an authenticity certificate here, and that's by the creator. So there's a um, sort of meaning in everything here is in German. So that's the bird. I think that might be an extra card, an extra bird. So that is called Golden Lenormand by Marcella Sulzman. Um, Golden Lenormand. I really do like this. I think it's just absolutely charming. Um, it's beautiful and it hasn't really obscured the, the symbols in a way that I personally need to see them. So there's the sun. <clears throat> Bear, anchor, house, letter, scythe, moon, and you have the number, this this here. And interestingly, it has a um, astrological symbol, so that I haven't really been investigating too much. I've been focusing mainly on the image. This is the whip, mice, ring, agreement, stalk, clover, cross, Key, fox, crossroads, child. It's interestingly, that's so it's not all astrological. Yeah, I'm not quite sure about that. I can't comment on that. Um, that's the card. So there's number and card both. And I just like the way it's, and I think the way it's arranged on the card. And I think it's, um, you can see there's quite three dimensional, almost like. Um, Oil painting, coffin, lilies, snake, clouds, clearly which one is light, which one is dark, and stars, garden, the garden is in public so that's important to me and the way I read, ship, book, the book is closed, some people and as you can see the spine is facing that way and the um, opening is facing that way so sometimes that can be useful a mountain a tree heart owls so either you have the owls or the birds um, sometimes you have this sort of a lot of chatter well this one here could have a slightly different slant to the reading woman bouquet 
dog, rider, fish. Um, so it's a lot of uh, school of fish is important in the way I read the symbol as well because usually it's abundance, streams of abundance um, rather than just the one fish in a, in a fish bowl, for example. It give a very different sense of the fish. Tower. Sun. So I can't quite recall what this is. 37. She looks like an angel. So I think this is an extra card. Because uh, Lenormand deck consists of 36, right? So I'll put that in. So I really, really do love this this deck. Uh, it's just so adorable. Um, so I think you can Google. I think she has her own website. I can't remember, but it's Golden Lenormand by Marcella, 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 Sulzman. <clears throat> This is my all-time, this has never left my uh, favorite list of the Norman decks ever since I bought this three years ago. So, these three and the silhouette, really, the Norman. Uh, again, I'll put the link below, I can't find it for the minute. Honorable mention are two um, <clears throat> monochromatic deck. This one here is by someone who's quite known in the tarot community, I think. Her name is uh, Robin uh, Tish Hollister. So she created a lot of um, decks. This one is Le Petit Le Norma Noir. Um, so it's very clear again. It's creative, but it's clear uh, in terms of what I need to look at because of the way I read. Um, I do find that, although I love monochromatic decks, I do find that when you are needing to speed through a reading, um, it is easier to be able to spot colors because when they are monochromatic, they blend together and it is good in terms of highlighting the shapes of the symbols and nothing else. So you're really dealing with just the symbols. Um, but I'm a visual person and so I found that I often pick up uh, cues from the colors as well. <coughs> Not in terms of reading, but in terms of identifying what I'm looking at. I rely on colors as well often. And so these ones are brilliant. Um, I have a lot of monochromatic um, Lenormand decks. Um, Black Hand is, I think it's called Black Hand. That's a nice one as well. Um, so you can see that that's just the, that's the cover and she has a Halloween one as well orange with black um, monochromatic but Halloween is not a season that I am attached to so I feel quite detached from Halloween so I think I'm gonna let that go again I can't find it otherwise I would have showed this to you um, this is the rider you can see it's really quickly clover ship house tree cloud snake Coffin, bouquet, scythe, whip, owls, birds, child, fox, bear, star, stalk, dog, tower, garden, mountain. No, that's the garden. You see what I mean? Okay. If no, that's um, crossroads, mice, heart, ring, a book, letter, man, woman. Lily's sun, moon, key, fish. The fish is not a school of fish, but you know, at least it's not trapped in a bowl, so that's fine. Anchor and cross. Another monochromatic honorable mention is, this is my most recent purchase. It's by Lunar Narciso, the creator of Vanessa Tarot, as well as Tarot Rikit. It's a very clear letter, bouquet, tree. Um, it has this sort of um, Southeast Asian flair that I really like. Um, Lunar Narciso is based in the Philippines. This reminds me very much of Javanese batik and what we call Sogan batik, uh, using the the natural coloring of soga tree, uh, creating this um, hand-dyed uh, wax-resist cloth patterns. And also that reminds me a little bit of Shadow Puppets, which is a, 
tradition known in both Chinese tradition as well as Javanese tradition. They have brilliant sh shadow puppets, amazing, amazing ones. And that reminds me very much of those things. And the symbols are clear. I can call it out almost immediately. There was one that I stumbled uh, a little bit, but <coughs> as soon as I realized what I was looking at, that one there, I thought it was the sun, and then I realized it was actually the clouds, so. Again, I flipped through this uh, fast on purpose, um, because the idea is that the symbol uh, immediately identify itself without much pondering. Um, so that's two honorable mentions in terms of monochromatic ones. Um, another one, I think I've mentioned the black hand is monochromatic as well, it's black with white um, artwork. So this one here by Malpertuis um, is something I really love, but I found the symbols, a lot of the symbols, are a bit uh, tricky to identify. Um, so reading can be a little um, stop and start. Um, but if I'm not in a hurry, this one is a pleasure to look at. So that's the sun. And you can see the suits in there. That's like an ace of diamonds. Um, that's the cross, letter, birds, fish. So the flowers are a little distracting there. So I, you know, snake, house. Rider. I mean, the rider is a messenger on horseback, riding really quickly, trying to get from one place to another. A camel isn't exactly fast, and so they're not usually <clears throat> used to carry messages. Um, maybe that that bird is, in this case, perhaps. I don't know, but uh, you know what I mean? It's just too much thinking there. But again, if I'm on a more leisurely pace, this is actually quite a pleasure to work with, but otherwise, I remember when I was trying to make this business decision a couple of years ago, I was just at my wit's end and I used this and I thought, you know what, why don't you just step aside for a minute because I really need to, you know, I really need to get going here. And so I just picked that one and it's it's great. It came out exactly as, as you know, expected. Well, Pertwist is another one that I've fallen in love with. I think it's the Arabian theme to the Norman deck. It's just absolutely gorgeous. But I saw some of the images and I thought I, I won't be able to read with it. I mean, I could, but I'll, I'll be stopping and starting and stopping and starting and I'll get really annoyed with myself. And, and I would have co collected um, as an art collection, but, you know, um, in collecting art, my, my criteria is quite different for the art that I collect compared to decks that I collect because like one of you said, it, it is a functional art. It is uh, an art with a purpose. So when that purpose isn't served or can't be served, the, the our evaluation of the artistic merit of that tool is very much dependent on the working of that tool as a functioning tool. So, you know, um, yeah, although I could see myself collecting his art, I probably wouldn't have collected it in the form of decks, for example. Um, I wouldn't mind a print, maybe. Yeah, so that is the Chelsea Lenormand by Malpertuis. So those are my top six um, with seven honorable mention um, silhouettes, um, Lenormand. So really, my top four plus three honorable mention. Um, the Norman decks and um, this is helping me figure out what to let go I think a lot of the Lenormand deck that I have I will have to let go because it's just not they just won't be the decks that I reach out for even though I like the art <coughs> um, yeah as I said and as some of you said collecting art um, is a different criteria to collect what kind of art that we collect we will have different criteria compared to what kind of decks that we will collect um, with arts that we like. It's a completely different thing. So 
So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.